Counting down now to 2020, our next guest has been wowed by Andrew Yang, the Democratic presidential candidate who wants a universal basic income. He's admired Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard's bravery on foreign policy. She's also running for president. And he's wondered if President Trump is trying to lose the White House. Tucker Carlson, the host of Tucker Carlson tonight, and star of all kinds of other things, best-selling author and blah, blah, blah. Uh, There's so much So there. impressive. <laughs> Thank okay. you for having me. It is great to have you. I want to talk to you, because you've talked to a lot of these 2020 contenders. I want to play a little bit of your back and forth with Andrew Yang. Yes. Okay, and then we'll discuss. My friends in Silicon Valley are working on trucks that can drive themselves because that's where the money is, where we can save tens, even hundreds of billions of dollars by trying to automate that job. But I was just with truck drivers in Iowa last week. It's going to be a disaster for many, many American communities. You're one of the only people I've ever met who's honest about the effects of deindustrialization. No, I'm not assuming you're going to vote for him, but you agree with him on this point. Well, I'd definitely vote for a candidate like that. I mean, I don't agree with everything he says. I don't know mm -hmm. all of his views, but I can't think of many more people on either side who are thinking more deeply about what the actual problems are. Automation, by every estimate, will eliminate a huge percentage of jobs in the United States at exactly the moment when we're importing millions of new people every year mm -hmm. to fill jobs that probably won't exist three years from now or 10 years from now, it's, it's lunatic. And nobody's saying anything about it other than Andrew Yang. I'm not sure why, mm -hmm. why it's falling to him, but I don't care. I, I, I want somebody to tell the truth about it. So you're worried about the jobs, not this whole AI worry that people have, like the robots are gonna come eat us and kill us. Well, I think there's no question that- Or is that a problem too? Oh, it's a massive problem. <laughs> of course, of course, well, of course, because anybody running a business wants to eliminate labor costs, you mm -hmm. know, or reduce them to the extent possible. Mm -hmm. That's the imperative of the market. There's no sin in that, but it's real and we can't pretend otherwise. And so we often will say, we need more workers for agriculture. It's like, they don't know anything about agriculture, actually. Very few parts of the ag economy aren't automated now. No, it's, it's a completely real thing. By the way, lawyers, physicians, Huge sectors of white-collar America are about to be overturned by AI, and nobody is talking about it because Russia! I refuse to see a robot doctor. I'm just going on the record with that. <laughs> I will not have my temperature taken by robot. No. Okay, so let's talk about Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard yeah. also running. You guys have talked foreign policy. Here's a bit of that. They refuse to engage on the substance of this argument about why they continue to uh, push for and try to wage these regime change wars, ignoring the disastrous consequences on the people in those countries and the American people. We disagree on many things, but I admire your bravery for saying that out loud. Hmm. So. Bravery for saying it out loud, or do you agree with some of her philosophy on that? Well, I both? agree. I agree strongly. Mm -hmm. And she was just attacked on this channel by one of her anchors the other day for going to Syria, because that's bad. Because Assad well, is bad. Well, is the issue that she's had that a lot of people have criticized her being praiseworthy of him or spending well, time let with me, him. Let me, let me praise Assad. Then let me be totally clear about it. A lot of things Assad does that are wrong. Assad protected the religious minorities within that country, as his father did for many decades. It had a huge and vibrant Christian community. That is something good that Assad did. We've backed regime change against Assad. And what has happened to those Christians? Well, many have been murdered and many have fled the country. So like, that's a real thing to praise about Assad. She did, and she got called all kinds of names for it. I think that's unfair. Hmm. Okay, now, um, Pete Buttigieg. A lot of the media, a lot of the media, totally in love with him, has described him as chicken soup for my soul. You said that was uh, that they want to consume him like a hearty stew. That was, that was a step too far. Well, for just you. the whole thing. I mean, Buddha judge. I thought Buddha doesn't judge, but I guess in some cases Buddha doesn't. Buddha judge. Okay, Buddha edit. Okay. Buddha there judge. was a former <laughs> flack for Jeb Bush on another channel who was going on about. Pete Buttigieg is chicken soup for my soul. And we, we just played the clip and it was just so nauseating. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't resist responding um, by saying what I did. Just the, the sucking up, the fawning, it's so disgusting. You know who's the most mad though, probably? Hmm. Beto. Beto. Francis O'Rourke. Of course. O'Rourke. He thought, you know, He's I thought happy. I was your boyfriend, thought Beto. Right. You know, so Beto has this week where everyone worships Beto. He, he's RFK. And then Pete Buttigieg shows up, and all of a sudden it's like, Beto who? No, I agree. I mean, both of them are kind of substance-free characters. Whoever gets the nomination, I can tell you, it's going to be one tough human being, because only tough people get the mm -hmm. nomination of either party. 
are these guys ready for it? I have no idea. But just watching the media suck up to politicians just always turns my stomach. Not surprising, Tucker, because you call it like you see it. <laughs> you do, all the time. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you Good so much. Good to see you. Shannon. Come back again soon. In the meantime, we'll see you at 8 o'clock every night.